Hi everyone, in this video we're continuing to look at question 8 part A of the 1998 4 unit HSC exam. Uh, here we're going to look at part 3. So this follows on from a few prior videos I've made working through part 1 and 2. So make sure you go have a look at those if you haven't already. Uh, part 3 wants us to prove by induction that x1 times x2 all the way up to xn to the power of 1 on n is less than or equal to x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn divided by n. And hopefully you recognize this as the AMGM inequality, the arithmetic mean versus geometric mean inequality, which states that an arithmetic mean is always going to be greater than or equal to the equivalent geometric mean. So the inequality is kind of the opposite way to what you'd probably see it normally. Um, I'd say a lot of four unit, if not most four unit students would probably have proven this result in some way or another, um, but not necessarily by induction and not necessarily in the context of this question where we're going to make use of what we've just shown in part two. So this, this, the question right is basically scaffolding this proof. The whole point of part one and two was to lead us up to being able to do this proof by induction. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so we're just going to work through the normal steps of induction. So step one is to um, show that this result is true for the first value of n that we care about. So for us, that's going to be n is equal to one. It doesn't really make sense to have zero. Um, you know, you get undefined basically. So n is equal to one is the first um, value that it makes sense to, to test for. Um, so let's just look at the left hand side and right hand side. So the left hand side would be equal to x1 and we stop there to the power of 1 on 1. So that's just equal to x1. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the right hand side would be x1 and again we stop divided by 1. Uh, so that's just again that's just um, x1 and that is equal to the left hand side and because we've got less than or equal to we're all good so we can say therefore it's true for uh, n is equal to one then we've got step two which is always the simplest in induction or at least most of the time simple we assume true for n is equal to k so basically what that means is we're going to assume that x1 times x2 all the way up to xk to the 1 on k is less than or equal to x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xk divided by k. And hopefully that assumption is going to come in handy in our next step, step 3, where we need to show that it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. And this is where all the hard work will be. Um, let's, uh, let's just start with the left hand side and see if we can end up with something that looks like the right hand side. Um, um, or at least have an inequality um, where we end up with the right hand side. So the left hand side will be equal to, um, if we're putting in k plus 1, we're going to get um, x1 times x2 and so on. Um, I might just write times xk and then we have to go one more xk plus 1 all to the power of 1 on k plus 1. That, that's our left hand side. Um, now naturally I want to kind of get something that looks like this so that I can then introduce the inequality based on what we assumed in step 2. So I think part of that is going to be breaking out this multiplication into two bits. Um, first, we're going to want our x1, x2, all the way up to xk, and just isolate that. So that's going to be to the power of 1 on k plus 1. And then we've got our, um, our remaining xk plus 1 to the 1 on k plus 1. So that's okay to do because it's an exponent and we're multiplying. Um, um, so we've kind of nearly got what's up here, it's just we've got this different, we've got 1 on k plus 1 instead of 1 on k. Um, but 
uh, what we can do, maybe just off to the side, um, 1 on k plus 1, well, if I multiply top and bottom by k, that's really just equal to 1 on k times um, k on k plus 1. And um, this is probably going to come in handy. So let, let's, let's um, kind of throw that in. So let's say, well, this is really equal to um, x1 times x2 and so on up to xk to the 1 on k. And that is to the power of k on k plus 1. Because our rules of exponents means that these would multiply and then simplify to this. But the beauty of it is we've now on the inside got exactly what we've assumed in step 2. So it's going to come in handy. And then we've still got our x to the k plus 1 to the 1 on k plus 1 hanging off uh, on the end. So... Um, now we can bring in our inequality because we can say that this left hand side um, will be uh, less than, well this bit here, in here, we know is less than or equal to this over here. So we can, we can insert that and make it an inequality. So we can say that's therefore going to be less than or equal to um, x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xk on k, so that's um, replacing that, and then we've still got our to the power of k on k plus 1, and we've still got our xk plus 1 to the power of 1 on k plus 1, so we need to deal with those um, somehow, um, but basically this we got to using 2, using step 2 up here. Um, probably not enough room to keep going here, so I might have to turn over. But um, before I do, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to try and link up where we've got to with um, kind of this inequality here to see if it can help us. And um, here we've got an inequality where on one side, the side that's smaller, which is kind of what we're going to want, the side that's smaller, we've got one thing multiplied by another thing. So why not see if we can define S as this one thing and T as this other thing and then see if we can get it into a format that lets us make use of this and then see if that's helpful. So what I'll do is let's turn over and let's say let S equal um, this bit here. So it's... Uh, x1 plus x2 and so on up to xk on k to the power of k on k plus 1. So we're going to let that be s and let's let t be uh, this second bit here. xk plus 1 on to the power of 1 on k plus 1. So xk plus 1 to the power of 1 on k plus 1. So according to those definitions, we can say that our left-hand side can be then written in the form of being less than or equal to st, since that's where we got to here, s times t. All right, so if that's the case, um, um, well, we know st using our result from part 2 is less than or equal to this, um, but we're just missing some p's and q's. So we need to kind of define p and q again in a way with reference to what we're dealing with, in a way that's going to be helpful. I think because um, we've got here our, um, like we're, we're going to have... Um, kind of in this inequality, t to the power of q. So I think it might make sense just to let q, let's um, let q be k plus 1, because that's kind of what we're dealing with here up in the exponents. It's inverse, but that's probably not going to be a big deal. But um, if we let q is equal to k plus 1, then because we were actually told the relationship between p and q, 
uh, way back in part one, we were told P is equal to Q on Q minus one. So we can say, well, if that's what we define Q as, then P will be Q on Q minus one, which will be K plus one on K plus one minus one, or in other words, K plus one on K. So, um, all right. Now, coming back to our inequality, we know that the left-hand side is less than or equal to st, and we know st is um, itself less than or equal to, um, and let's just get, make sure I get this right, s to the p on p plus t to the q on q. So we can say s to the p on p plus t to the q on q, because if the left-hand side is less than this, and this is less than this, then this inequality will also hold true. Um, so, okay, let's insert our P's and Q's and uh, see what we get. So that means it's going to be less than or equal to S to the power of um, K plus 1 on K, because that's what we got to for P, um, divided by K plus 1 on K plus uh, t to the q, so t to the k plus 1, divided by k plus 1. All right, so let's just clean this up a bit. So that's going to be less than or equal to, um, this will become k on k plus 1 times s to the k plus 1 on k, um, plus 1 on k plus 1 times t, to the k plus 1. And now, now that we've kind of made use of our de defined items, we're probably at a point where it probably makes sense to now put these back in to see if we can then get uh, to, to something that, that looks like this, albeit with um, k plus 1 instead of k. So um, I might, uh, I've probably got enough room for one more here before I have to turn over. So that's going to be less than or equal to um, k on k plus 1 times, now s was this. Um, um, let's, let's just write this in full. So we're going to get um, x1 plus x2 and so on up to xk all divided by k. Now that was to the power of k on k plus 1, and we're doing s, which is all of that, itself to the power of k plus 1 on k. That's that bit, and then we get plus 1 on k plus 1 um, t, which t we defined as um, x, to the, x of k plus 1 to the power of 1 on k plus 1, and then that t itself is being taken to the power of k plus 1. So um, the beauty of defining p and q in the way we did is um, even though it was the inverse, it means that these now cancel. That exponent will cancel with that, that exponent will cancel with that. So now if I turn over, what we can say is that our left hand side is less than or equal to our um, k on k plus 1 times um, x1 plus x2 up to xk on k, so x1 plus x2 and so on up to xk on k, plus our 1 on k plus 1, xk plus 1, or in other words, xk plus 1 on k plus 1. Now, this k is going to cancel with this k, and we've got a common denominator, so this actually then simplifies to x1 plus x2 and so on, plus xk plus xk plus 1, all divided by k plus 1. And that, that is what the inequality needs to be. Uh, in other words, less than or equal to the right-hand side um, in terms of what it would be when we're dealing with k plus 1 here. Um, so after all that, we can say, therefore, the inequality is true 
when n is equal to k plus 1. And that's basically the hard work done because now in step 4, however you've learned to write it, I'm just going to write by induction, but however um, you've been taught in terms of the specific wording, through the process of mathematical induction, we can therefore conclude um, the AMGM inequality, basically. Um, but the way we're going to write it for this question is x1 times x2 and so on, up to xn to the power of 1 on n is less than or equal to x1 plus x2 and so on, up to xn divided by n. So you have part three done, a kind of fairly interesting way to prove the AMGM inequality, um, making use of this result that we proved from part two. So it kind of, I think for a lot of students, they may look at this part three and almost think, what has this got to do? Why is this even part of the same question? It's almost like it's just starting out of nothing. But actually, I think what the question writers are really trying to get at is can, can you um, make the mathematical link? So when things don't actually look like they're connected, can you make the connections? And I think for this question, the hardest part of this question was when we got up to the bit where we needed to define things. And, and it's that, I guess, getting enough practice at going, well, how should I define it so I'm going to get something useful here? I think defining S and T came down to noticing it's one thing multiplied by another and, and kind of making the link, well, that's what I had in this inequality. I think defining Q and P, probably a bit harder. You may have been tempted to define Q as maybe 1 on K plus 1, because that's what we had here. And maybe if you did that, you would have still got to the same place, maybe without the clean cancelling. Um, you probably would have got there, actually, I'm not sure, but... Either way, I think knowing that it's going to have something to do with k plus 1, like using these exponents to decide how you're going to define p and q is the essence. And I think from there, as you saw, we kind of get to where we need to get to. So hopefully you're able to follow along with that, even if it's not something you may have necessarily been able to do yourself without any guidance. I think um, a lot of induction questions, it's really about exposure and seeing different techniques and kind of um, getting yourself familiar with them so that if you did come across them in, a, in an exam, you almost have a toolkit of things to draw on. So hopefully this expands your toolkit on that front and it's another kind of um, set of techniques that you can make use of when, when they become helpful. All right, uh, so now in the next video, I'll go through the final part, part four, and then we're done with this question 8A. All right, tick boom.